Well, Jim, we've just finished our conference, and you have been uh, a speaker uh, during that conference, and we have looked at the topics of sexual sin, homosexuality, gender confusion, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And I wonder, as a pastor, um, if you could just give a little overview of how you think uh, the church is doing today, as opposed to, let's say, 15, 20 years ago, about this topic and where we have grown mm -hmm. as a church and biblical counseling. Yeah. And, um, and then maybe we can talk about um, what still needs to be done. Great, great questions. I, uh, as, a, as a pastor, a relatively young pastor, right? I, uh, I, I'll have to say that I'm very thrilled with not only what we've covered this week, but also how the church is maturing yes. and, and engaging in this conversation. I'll, I'll say this, I was thinking about this conversation earlier today. I think the church has grown over the past two or three decades to come to a good place right now in this conversation. We've yes. grown because we've grown in, in an understanding of scripture and an yes. understanding of theology. Yes. In particular, I think the theology that has tempered us and has equipped us is a, is a, is a, is a clear understanding an application of the beginning, Genesis 1, and then, of course, the fall in Genesis 3. Yes. Because creation was perfect. It was exactly as the, the Creator intended. It was very good. And then it was broken by sin. Yes. And so much was lost at that point. Mm. Uh, what was lost? Things that come to my mind that were lost in the fall was uh, a loss of clarity. Uh, the design was all marred. Yes. And, and, and lines were blurred, and this is one of the lines that was blurred. Uh, there was a loss of dependence on God because man had uh, stepped out on his own to be his own king. So there was a loss of dependence on God, a loss of clarity, a loss of safety, because now there is chaos in the creation. And then there is a loss of just an understanding of, of how to make sense of everything. So yes. with that loss, um, the boundaries were gone, definitions were erased, and, and we're trying to make it the best we can in the few decades we have, and then we die, okay? Yeah. So if, if the fall really happened, as I see it did in, in Genesis, then Romans 1 definitely makes sense. Because in, in Romans 1, in a fallen world, what is, what is described, what's described is that God gives a culture over and also individuals in the same sequence. And that's yes. a, a sexual revolution, and then a homosexual revolution, and then it turns into all chaos there by the end of Romans chapter one, yes. where it, it's, you're given over to all, to, to the extremes and the things that are listed there by Paul at the end of Romans. Yes. So if the fall happened and it did, and if Romans one is an accurate playbook, and it is, um, we've known it all along because we've been doing exegetical work as a church, and but I don't know that we've always made clear connections. We haven't, I know we haven't because we haven't been patient with things we don't understand as far as sins that people are struggling with. And we're pretty harsh on those who struggle with things and feel gravity that we don't feel, we don't understand them. And so we had to, as a church, make a better connection with our exegesis and with the headlines, so yes. to speak. Yes. You know, you understand the fall, you understand the loss, and you understand Romans 1 then everything going on around us makes perfectly good sense. Yes. And, and what that did, I think, is it tempered us from being impatient and even angry with things we would say and the way we'd mm -hmm. chase them away or, or avoid them, we'd hide away as a church. Now, Scripture frees us to actively pursue them because yes. they're struggling with sin, but you know what? So are we. Yes. And... and uh, Though I can't relate to the gravity of their sin and the constant pulling of that, I can sure relate to the pull of sin, right? As you say in Changed into His Image, we have designer lusts according to James 1. Every man is drawn away and enticed by his own unique lusts. And though I have to now call on people that struggle with same-sex attraction or, or maybe even substance abuse, say, hey, you need to fight every fiber of your strength in this direction. While I don't relate to that, I better be fighting just as hard something yes, else. Yes. And so making the connect between Genesis and Romans and the headlines, I think, has tempered the church and even postured us, not just to be patient, but to freely pursue them because yes. they need the gospel. Yes. They need rescue. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 
And, and I, I think as we have begun to deal with more and more of these issues that we haven't struggled with ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we look at why is it that this is not an easy thing to move out of, whether it be sexual addiction or addiction of any kind or um, homosexual desires. I think one thing that has been become clear in the conference and has been increasingly clear in uh, biblical counseling movement and, and conservative theology is a, a, a refresh in our understanding of of the uh, the depths of the depravity of the human heart of, of our our hearts, not just the people we look at and say, well, we uh, we we don't have that sin, mm -hmm. but our, our hearts are just as depraved. Mm -hmm. And uh, our sin nature is just as entrenched in all of us. Yeah. And, and it requires um, a, a more robust understanding of, of the sinful nature and a far more robust understanding of what repentance truly is. And uh, it's, it's not just an event. Yeah. It has to become a lifestyle for every one of us, not just for a homosexual whose desires hang on. My, my desires hang on. Right. My, my sinful desires uh, keep pulling me the same direction all the time. And repentance has to become a way of life and not just an event. Mm -hmm. So I think what the needs of our culture have done is, is shown us ourselves in new and fresh ways as we look into the mirror and, and has driven us to the scriptures. And interestingly enough, uh, the, the biggest help is coming from theologians and biblical counselors who spend a lot of time in the Puritan literature because they, mm -hmm. they really uh, saw this in a way that we haven't seen it. Right. And it's right. been a refreshing yeah. change. Yeah. Um, so Jim, where, where do you think we can get better? What, what else does the church need to do? Well, I think it's not just the pastors that need to make the connect yes. between the text and the headlines, but we need to lead our people. We need to equip our people to have the conversation um, I even think it wise in our congregation in De the Detroit area that uh, we're teaching our people the, the terms, the definitions that uh, the culture is using, even in this particular area yes, of, yes. Of, of, of transgender <laughs> behavior and things like that. And, and, uh, um, and we're teaching our parents how to have that conversation with children that are old enough to enter into it so that we're not jarred by it. I mean, we've been talking about those who struggle with substance abuse for a long time, and we have an understanding of that, even our children do and our teenagers. It's time that we have this conversation as well because the, uh, the whole culture from the political platforms yes. to yes. the entertainment industries, yes. even to the legal environments yes. are forcing us to have this conversation. So I think the pastors need to lead the way in equipping our people, that sounds like Ephesians 4, to do this kind of work of ministry. Yes. Yes. But it needs to be with an end game of a gospel proclamation yes. because the Spirit of God is still granting faith and repentance to those who are lost yes. and confused. Yes. So I think that's one thing we can do is help our church frame this conversation so that they can intentionally befriend people and for the sake of the gospel. And I think we need to keep our church looking to the future because everything that's broken now yes. is yes. going to be restored yes. yeah. Amen. in Christ. So. Amen. I, uh, that's wonderful. I, I, uh, a, a passage that comes to mind is, is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And God's given us this inspired yeah. book for certain profitable exercises. And, and, and we think of doctrine where God is teaching us what is right and, and uh, reproof where he's telling us where we're wrong. Mm -hmm. And it is from those two components, those two purposes of the scriptures, that we get our ethics. Mm -hmm. What is right and wrong? And for a long time in church, we have been... We've been fairly good in the ethics of declaring what is right and wrong. I think the last two talk about ministry. Yeah. The Word of God is also good for, it's profitable for correction. Mm -hmm. how, how to make these wrong things right. Yeah. And then instruction and in righteousness. How do we live righteously from here on out? Mm -hmm. And that is ministry. And I, I think we need to continue uh, to, to use the Word, not just for an ethical Mm -hmm. platform, uh, which it is, right. and, and everything starts there. Yeah. But also, it is profitable to equip every man who is a believer to effective ministry. Right. And there is, there's much work to do in that equipping sure. realm as sure. well. And I think as our families are more and more impacted 
um, by this culture and even even children in our families and our churches are wondering about their own orientation right. and so forth. Our, our parents need to be more and more alert. So yeah. I think you're right. I think we need to equip the church more and more in, in those areas. And it's just exciting to see how these things are coming to the surface and how it really is the old gospel themes yeah. that keep coming back as a, yeah. as a methodology. And and that's our, our goal here at the uh, seminary is to equip people for today's issues with um, uh, the, the age-old theology that that's God right. has given us. And that's right. Thank you for joining You're us, welcome. Jim. I appreciate your uh, part in the conference and equipping mm-hmm. men. And uh, it's been an exciting conference. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. You're welcome.